Hello everyone, we are still introducing probabilities and in the last video we examined the different operations that can take place between events. We're going to go one step further today and introduce the concept of conditional probabilities and of independence. Occasionally, when an event is more or less pl plausible of occurring, when another event is known to have occurred, we will talk about conditional probabilities in the situation. There are also situations where the probability of an event is unaffected by another's. This section will focus on the effects of an event on another. So, conditional probability. In terms of notation, we shall denote P of A slash B as being the probability of event A conditional to B. It is assumed in this case that event B is known to have occurred. And therefore, we could also read this probability as the probability of A knowing B, or the probability of A if B is realized. So we can read P of A slash B as the probability of A will occur given that, or assuming that, B has occurred. When it comes to calculating the probability of a conditional probability, the probability of A conditional to B is obtained by counting, so finding the cardinality of the intersection of A with B. We want A to occur, and we also know that B has occurred, or is assumed to have occurred. That's why the numerator is formed of the intersection. And the division is by the cardinality of B, which is the known aspect to have occurred. We could also go by the ratio of probabilities. So P of A knowing B, or conditional to B, is the probability of A intersection with B over P of B. For example, let's consider a situation where, where two regular dice are tossed and their respective outcomes are noted. And let's define the events A as being obtaining a sum of six, whose listed form provides five sample points. B represents the event the dice show the same number, whose listed form shows six different sample points. The intersection of A with B reveals that there is one common sample point, which is at 3, 3. Therefore, the probability of A's intersection with B is 1 over 36, 36 being the sample size or the cardinality of the sample space. The probability of A conditional to B is the number of ways A and B occur simultaneously, which is 1, divided by the cardinality of B, which is 6. In other words, if we know that the dice revealed the same numbers, then there is a 1 out of 6 chance that they will also add up to 6. Likewise, we could have found the probability of A knowing B, or conditional to B, by the ratio of the probabilities. There is 1 out of 36 chances that, the, that A and B will occur together, so the intersection, and P of B had a probability of 6 over 36. So the same 1 out of 6 probability is obtained. It's important to note that events in a conditional probability are not commutative. So the probability of B conditional to A would be obtained by counting the number of ways B and A occur simultaneously, which is 1. So we're still talking about the possibility of 3, 3, being the result of the dice, divided by the cardinality of A, which is 5. So the probability of B conditional to A is 1 out of 5. This also could have been calculated through the ratio of probabilities. So you've noticed that P of B conditional to A is 1 out of 5, and differs from P of A knowing B, which was 1 out of 6. Here's another example where two regular dice are tossed and their respective outcomes are noted. 
Let's consider events C. The first die reveals a 3. In the listed form, we've written all sampled points for which the first die has a 3 as an outcome. And let D represent the sum of the dice is 7. There are 6 sample points that satisfy this event. The intersection of C with D has one common point, which is, or one common sample point, which is 3, 4. So the first die revealed a 3, and the sum is 7. The probability of C individually is 6 out of 36. And such is the case as well for P of D. The probability of their intersection, so by counting there is one sample point that is obtained divided by the cardinality of the, um, of the sample space, which is 36. So 1 over 36 is the probability of the intersection. Now let's look at the probability of C conditional to D. So recall that the P of C conditional to D means counting the number of ways C and D occur. In the listed form, we noted that one sample point is common to C and D, and that was the 3-4 combination, whereas the cardinality of D was 6, so 1 out of 6. Likewise, the ratio of probabilities, 1 over 36 for the intersection of C and D, over 6 over 36, the probability of D reveals the same probability of 1 over 6. So essentially, knowing that the sum of the dice is 7, there is a 1 out of 6 chance that the first die had a 3. Likewise, the probability of D conditional to C is calculated by finding the cardinality of the intersection. So one sample point is found at the intersection of D and C, divided by the cardinality of C, which is 6, and 1 over 6 is obtained. This is also true through the ratio of probabilities instead. So observe how in the last two examples, the probability of C conditional to D was equal to the probability of C itself, which means that the probability of C occurring is completely unaffected by the fact we know or don't know that D has occurred. P of D knowing C was also equal to P of D, which means that the probability of D occurring is unaffected by the knowledge that C has occurred. In other words, C and D are independent events. So this is a very important definition. Events A and B are independent whenever the probability of A conditional to B is equal to the probability of A, and the probability of B conditional to A is equal to the probability of B. When one occurs, they will both occur. So one cannot be true without the other. If events A and B are independent, then we're going to show an identity that comes from this relationship. So here is, by definition, what how P of A conditional to B is calculated. It's the probability of the intersection over P of B. Now remember that if events A and B are independent, then the probability of A conditional to B is no different from the probability of A alone. And then we can cross multiply the P of B. So here's an interesting identity. When A and B are independent, the probability of the intersection is equal to the product of the individual probabilities. Don't confuse exclusive with independent. Events that are exclusive means they cannot occur at the same time. Independence does not prevent another event from happening. In fact, the reality is it has absolutely no incidence on its chances of occurring. For instance, here are a bunch of events, P of A, P of B, P of C, whose probabilities are a quarter, one-fifth, one-sixth, 
and their mutual intersections. So the intersection of A with B is 1 out of 18 in terms of its probability, 1 over 24 for the probability of the intersection of A with C, and the intersection of B with C is 0, or is impossible. If we look to find P of B knowing A, right, so following our definition, we're going to find the ratio of P of B's intersection with A, and the order in which we write the intersection is, uh, has no effect. So probably, probability of A intersection with B is 1 over 18, probability of A is 1 over 4, and we get a 2 over 9 as a result. Notice how the probability of B knowing A, which is 2 over 9, is not equal to the probability of B, which is 1 over 5, which means that A and B are not independent. A has an effect on the probability of B occurring. And in the same manner, we would have also checked that the intersection is not equal to the, prob to the product of the probabilities. Let's look at a different pair this time. The probability of A conditional to C is obtained from the ratio of the intersection, or the probability of the intersection of A with C over P of C. 1 over 24 is the intersection of A with C. P of C is 1 out of 6. And therefore, the outcome of this quotient is 1 over 4. This time, the probability of A conditional to C is equal to the probability of A, which means A and C are independent. Which basically means that whether or not C occurs, A has the same chance of happening. Likewise, we could have verified that the product of the probabilities of A and C individually matches the probability of the intersection of A with C. This would also have allowed us to conclude to their independence. A and C are independent. Does it also mean that A and C bar are independent? So this is a property also of independent events. So now we have the probability of A conditional to C bar, and we've applied the definition in terms of the ratio of the intersections uh, a with C bar's probability divided by P of C bar. Remember from our previous videos that we can visualize A's intersection with C bar as being the region in A excluding the intersection. So from P of A, we exclude the intersection. At the denominator, 1 minus P of C is the probability of C not happening. The outcome is 1 out of 4. So P of A conditional to C bar is equal to P of A, which means A and C bar are independent. This will always be true. If A and C are independent, so will A and C bar. Finally, let's look at the pair B conditional to C. So the probability of B conditional to C is the ratio of the probability of intersection of intersecting B and C over P of C. Now, B and C cannot occur together, so the probability of their intersection is zero. Therefore, P of B conditional to C cannot equal P of B, which means B and C are not independent. In fact, these are mutually exclusive events. The fact that B is occurring prevents B from having any chance of occurring. 